Hello, welcome to World Plone Day and my talk on how to deploy a Plone cookie cutter project. My name is David Glick. I've been a member of the Plone community for a long time, and I wanted to show you how to get your Plone project that you're running locally up onto the public internet. So my goal here is to deploy a Plone site to wpd2023.glicksoftware.com, which is my domain. And just to show you that I'm not cheating, I'm going to try to load this here and just show that we're currently getting an error. So I've done a couple things to prepare here. I have a virtual server running on DigitalOcean. You can use uh, one somewhere else. It just needs to be a server that runs Ubuntu Linux and uh, that you can SSH into. So I started this up, got the IP address. I've also set up DNS so that I can access it at uh, the WPD2023 subdomain. Um, so I created a record here with that IP address. You can use whichever DNS service uh, you use for your domain. Um, and I verified that I can SSH into the machine. I've also created a repository called WPD2023 in my GitHub account. I used the Plone cookie cutter, um, the Plone starter. So I, um, I have cookie cutter, I ran this command uh, to create the template repository, and then I checked it into um, a Git repository and pushed it up to GitHub. When I did that, it includes some automation that builds images. So I have uh, these packages that show up here, the front end and the back end, which are the two images that we need in order to deploy Plum. All right, so let's do um, the actual deployment now. I'm gonna go into my repository here and into the DevOps folder. Now there's a few files that I already created um, which were not part of the template. So let me show you those. The first one is in the group vars users. I added my public key here. Uh, this is going to create a plone user and I wanna make sure that I can SSH in. Um, so I need my public key. I also need uh, in the inventory what we're doing here is we're gonna run an Ansible playbook that installs Docker and creates a user and does some other basic setup of the machine. And so we need to target a particular host. Um, the cookie cutter comes with a dev configuration. I've added a prod.yaml um, and I gave the name prod and then I configured it so that the host has my host name. Uh, we're using port 22, which is the usual SSH port and the, the root user um, so that Ansible knows uh, where to connect when I run the playbook. And then um, the other thing I added was .m underscore prod, which is going to set up some environment variables that will help control the process. So we're deploying to the prod or we're calling this environment prod. Um, this is the host name. We're using port 22 and we're going to we're going to create this plone user and that's what we're going to use to do our our deployments then on a regular basis fqdn is the fully qualified domain name uh, where the site will be available on the internet and then we can uh, leave alone the settings after that so i'm going to open up my terminal and um, source.env prod just to load those environment variables. And now I can run the playbook. There's a make file command that will kick that off. So this is now connecting to my prod server from the inventory and it's running all the steps in the playbook that do the basic setup. So it's going to install the base packages. It will um, set up that user. It will install Docker um, and set up Docker um, as a Docker Swarm. Docker Swarm is really for if you have multiple servers that you want to um, have a, a cluster of Docker images on. We're just gonna run it in a mode where there's, there's a single uh, Docker Swarm node because then it's in a good position to scale up later if we need it to. This might take a little bit longer when you run it. I already ran it on the machine once, so it's just kind of checking that everything is already in place. All right, 
so at this point, that, that's something you should only need to do once when you set up your server. Um, now I can SSH in as the Plone user, WTD, WPD 2023.clicksoftware.com. And we're in and uh, Docker is running. Although we aren't actually running any particular containers in Docker yet. So I'm gonna jump back out of the server now we're going to do a deployment. We're going to deploy a Docker stack um, to the remote server. Now, normally when I run Docker on my machine, it's just controlling uh, the local Docker. But Docker has a thing called context, which allows it to control Docker somewhere else. So currently we just have uh, a default context. I'm gonna run make Docker setup, which is going to add another one for us. And now if I look at the, the list of contexts again, I can see we have a prod context. And when I run the deploy command in a, in a second, it's going to use that one. So let me do make deploy. And this is going to deploy the, the stack, which is defined in plone.yaml file over here. And this just defines the different services and which images they'll use. So we have traffic, which is a front end web server. We have our Plone front end image. This is the custom image that was built um, that I showed you on GitHub. We have one of those for the back end as well. And then we have uh, Postgres running uh, as the database. So I will run make deploy. And now Docker is deploying that stack to the remote Docker running on the server. And now, uh, that's done, although not everything has probably started up yet. I'm gonna check the status with make status. And this shows us uh, the various images, or sorry, the various containers that are running. So we have uh, two backend containers, one DB container, two frontend containers, and one traffic container um, that are in the process of starting up. Uh, you can see here the, the desired state is running, the current state is preparing. So let me just monitor this for a little bit. Uh, looks like traffic finished coming up, the others are still preparing, which probably means that it's like pulling those images from the GitHub container registry, um, since I hadn't done that before. Now this, this may take a minute or two to come up. Um, when when you first create a plone site and a back and the backend container comes up it actually writes some things in the database to create the site and that can take a little bit of time our database is now up Now the backends are starting. We'll see if this works. Well, it will work. It's just a question of how long. Okay, we are back. And now the backends have finally started up. And so I'm going to go show you in the browser that I can go to the domain that was broken before and now it loads and there's Plone. And I, I guess I'm logged in here because I was testing this earlier, but I can log back in just to show you that this is actually working. And add a title. And there we have it. So this is a basic deployment. Um, there's plenty of things that, that can go into making a robust Plone deployment after this, setting up backups, uh, multiple nodes, um, various maintenance tasks, outgoing email, et cetera, et cetera. But this at least um, shows the basics of getting your server up and running. Thank you very much.